Okay, I'm going to look at an example of a hypothesis test on one mean. And um, I'm going to do this three different ways. We're going to perform this hypothesis test using confidence intervals, using cutoff values, and by producing a p-value. And uh, the, the problem is that a machine has been cal calibrated to produce steel rods with a mean circumference of 8 millimeters and a standard deviation in the circumference of 0 0.05 millimeters. 50 rods are produced and their circumference is measured. Uh, the average circumference of the 50 rods is 8.01 millimeters with, oh, I forgot to enter this in, is, that's alpha, with alpha equals 0 0.05, test when the mean circumference seems to really be 8 millimeters. And that should be test weather. Test weather, the mean circumference seems to really be 8 millimeters. So I'll get that in here real quick. Sorry about the typo. Okay, so the first way we're going to do this is with a confidence interval. Remember that what we do is we look at the sample data. In this case, we looked at 50, so that's n. Um, we have that the average circumference of the 50 rods, so that's x bar. Okay. And we're comparing that to see if that really looks like A. Okay, there's our alpha. And then let's see, standard deviation is 0.05. This is going to be our sigma. Now notice here that that's sigma. It's not S. It's a standard deviation of a population. Remember that the null hypothesis is that mu equals A. In other words, that our average circumference is actually 8 millimeters. That's a technical version of the null hypothesis. Practically, it's that the machine works as it's supposed to. So if the machine works as it's supposed to, then the standard deviation is going to be 0.05, as it's supposed to be. So for the confidence interval, what we're going to do, since we want a 5% probability of being wrong, assuming the null hypothesis is true, we're going to compute a 95, 1 minus alpha, percent confidence interval. So we're going to do a 95 percent confidence interval for mu. Okay, so to do that, we'll take our sample mean, 8.01, and we want to add, let's see, we want 95. So we want let's see where should I draw this I'll draw it over here we want that Boy, I always tend to give the right to tend to um, do a right skewed kind of a bell curve going on here okay so we want that this area is 0.95 and this little tail over here both tails together give you 0.05 so this little tail must be 0.025 so from here to the left it's going to be 0.975 so when we bring up the normal distribution chart we're looking for 0.975 and that's right here that's at 1.9 and you might even remember this from before it's 1.96 so to get a 95 percent confidence interval we're 1.96 standard deviations from the sample mean Okay, that's our 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu. Now, what's the standard deviation? It's not just 0.05. That's the standard deviation of one rod. But we did a sample mean of 50 rods, so it's going to be 0.05 divided by the square root of 50. Okay, so let me pull up a calculator here. And let's see, we have 8.01 plus 1.96 times 0 0.05 divided by the square root of 50. Okay, so that gives us 8, whoops, 8.024 about. About 8.024. Okay, and this is a confidence interval, so um, it doesn't really matter if you close it or open it. If this is, if we're really wanting to stick with this bell curve, the probability that's actually equal to that is zero. 
Um, but we're rounding, so we're, we are discretizing. Anyway, I'm rambling off here. Let's do the other side. Uh, we have 8.01 minus 1.96 times 0 0.05 divided by the square root of 50, and that gives us the other endpoint of our confidence interval, which is 7.996. So we can be 95% confident that mu is in this interval. Okay. Now, since A, which is 8 millimeters, falls in this interval, the machine does not appear to be producing an average circumference different than eight millimeters. Okay, that was, a, that was a mouthful there, but that's the conclusion of our hypothesis test. We didn't really conclude that the machine seems to be producing an average circumference of eight millimeters. It produced an average circumference of 8.01 millimeters when we looked at our sample data. Instead, what we did was we looked at the sample data and we compared it to the hypothesis that the mean circumference coming out of the machine is eight. And it turns out that that mean being equal to 8 is reasonable because that's in the 95% confidence interval. If alpha had been 0.02, we would have done a 98% confidence interval. Okay, so we take alpha, we subtract it from 1, we compute that confidence interval. If our specified value A lies within that interval, then we cannot support the, null, the alternative hypothesis. And if A does not fall in that interval, then we do support the, conf the alternative hypothesis. That's the confidence interval approach to a hypothesis test. Well, this confidence interval tells us reasonable values for mu based on the sample data. Okay, the second approach we're going to use is cutoff values. And this is just a little bit different than the confidence intervals. Notice that we went out 1.96 standard deviations from the sample mean. 1.96 times 0.05 times the square root of 50. Okay. So, 8 is going to fall in that confidence interval if this number, if our sample mean is no further than this from 1.96 times 0.05 divided by the square root of 50, if that is, if the sample mean is no further than that from 8, then 8 will fall in that confidence interval. If the sample mean is actually further than 1.96 times 0.05 divided by the square root of 50, then 8 is not going to fall in that confidence interval. So we can do our cutoff values. And our cutoff values are going to be 8 plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. So that's the standard deviation of one item divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, so if I plug this in a calculator, let's see, I get 8 plus 1, whoops, uh, 8 plus 1.96 times 0.05 divided by the square root of 50. So we get 8.014 for one of the cutoff values and the other cutoff value is 8 minus 1.96 times 0 0.05 divided by the square root of 50. That's 7.986. In other words, any sample mean between these two values okay, does not gives no evidence that the mean output of the machine is different than 8. It has to be at least 8.015 or it has to be um, less than 7.986 to really merit 
um, any kind of suspicion that or any kind of conclusion that the machine's output is not eight millimeters. Okay. Now the advantage here is notice we did not actually use the measurement. This could be done before a test. And in fact, that's a pretty good approach. This can be done before a hypothesis test just to see how sensitive it is, how far away those mean values would actually, how far away that sample mean would actually have to be. Since our sample mean of 8.01 falls in this range, okay, 8.01 in this range, no difference or I'll say a difference is not supported that's shorthand right I wrote out last time the long explanation of what this means people usually don't write that out a lot of times what they say is that the difference is not significant the difference between 8.01 8 and 8 is not, is not statistically significant, according to an alpha equals 0.05 confidence level. Okay, and then the third approach to, a, um, to the hypothesis test of one mean is the p-value. And this, especially with uh, uh, use of computers, is the most common nowadays. To get the p-value, we compute the z-score of our sample mean under the null hypothesis. So the sample mean follows a normal distribution with uh, mean mu and standard deviation 0.05 over square root of 50. If we're under the null hypothesis, then mu is equal to 8. So we have a mean of 8. So we're going to take our sample mean that we saw, subtract it from the theoretical expectation of the sample mean and then divide that by the standard deviation of the sample mean right this is seeing x bar as a normal random variable with mean mu and standard deviation 0.05 over the square root of 50. okay so if i do that let's see i get 8.01 minus 8 uh, divided by 0.05 and let's see I'm going to actually end up multiplying by the square root of 50 so the z-score ends up being about 1.41 in other words our, under the null hypothesis where mu is equal to a which is 8 the specified value we were, our sample mean was 1.41 standard deviations away from the actual expectation of the sample mean. Okay, well, what is the probability that we would be no further than that? So what we're going to do is we're going to compute this area, if that's a standard n normal curve. And I haven't really used this term standard normal in this class. Standard means it has mean zero standard deviation one. It's what you get when you use z-scores. Okay. What I'll do is I'll look up 1.41 on the chart. Let me find, it looks like I'm going to close the chart here, so I'm going to have to open it up. Okay, there's my normal table. And I want to look for 1.41. So here's 1.4, it's in that bottom row and then here's one so we have 0.9207 so um, this area from here to the left but all the way to the left is 0.9207 which means this area over here is one minus that which is 0 0.0 let's see 793 okay so the area here is 0.9207 minus 0 0.0793. So we have 0.9207 minus 0 0.0793, and we end up with, whoops, uh, 0.8414. That is the probability that we'd be no further from the 8 than what we actually saw under 
the null hypothesis. If this were large, that would mean that our value is actually far out. Now, this isn't actually the p-value. The p-value is 1 minus that, 1.8414, which is, let's see, 0 0.0586. Or I guess that's 0.1586. Let me back up here. 0.1586. And that p-value, let me use a different color here, that's the probability that we're more extreme than what we saw. And again, if we're actually close to the hypothesized mean, then that p-value is going to be fairly large. Now notice we didn't actually have to compute this. If we only want the p-value, we can just double this 0.0793, and that gives us a 0.1586. Now, since that p-value was less than our level, excuse me, it's greater than our level of significance implies that we do not support the alternative hypothesis. Okay. In other words, there, there is not a statistically significant difference between what we saw in our observations and the notion that this machine is producing a mean output of 8 millimeters. Okay, so H0, our null hypothesis, is accepted. Okay, so three different ways to perform the hypothesis test on one mean. We got a confidence interval, we have a cutoff value, and we have a p-value. Any of those three are valid, and um, I, I actually expect you to be comfortable with all three. Because this course is for teachers, we need to know how to do things multiple ways, and also I think that trying to wrap our head around these three different approaches will help us to get to the theory of why hypothesis testing is done the way it's done. Okay, so I will see you in the next video in which, in which we'll do the same kind of thing, except for we'll consider a proportion rather than a mean of a measurement.